Okay. The floor is yours. Awesome. I'd like to call the meeting to order and give a quick land acknowledgement. I'd like to acknowledge that we live and work on the unceded lands of the Denina people and thank them for their past, present, and future stewardship on the land for the land on which we live. Uh, can we get a roll call going? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. This is Lance. I will do that. Um, Chair Rodriguez. Present. Vice Chair King. Uh, present. Ms. Brawley. Hi, I'm here. Ms. Hobson. Here. Ms. Hodge. Here. Tasha. Mr. Clouda will be joining us. Nolan, are you with us yet? Okay. Ms. McConnell. Here. Mr. Miner. Mr. Smallwood. Here. All right. Thank you, everyone. Madam Chair, you have, do have a quorum. Okay, can we get um, a motion to approve the agenda? So move, Madam Chair. Thank you. Lindsay, I'll second the motion. Thank you. All right, so the, mo the agenda is approved. So the first item on the agenda is our BAC action plan for 2021. Thank you. I was just going to ask if you could bring it up. Thank you. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, if I could, I'm just, um, I didn't have a chance to run uh, the words by all of the commission. So, and also kind of want to put it on the record. So, what I'd like to do is I, I've got a two page summary of the words and the actions that we've talked about and just kind of characterizes um, what the commission wants to do. And then uh, it follows with a, a table of the departments and their assignments. So, in summary, you know, we started in December and then continued in January and, and took a lot of time to reflect on how the commission did what they liked and what they did not like and how they wanted to make some adjustments in moving into 21. So the first part of these, this document just illustrates uh, that recognition of the things that you've done. Um, obviously, 2020 was a unique year for everyone, including the commission, and that we really had to start doing our job virtually. And while we met in person at the beginning of the year, um, we were successful in you know, carrying out a lot of duties in 2020. And we learned some lessons and did some things that we thought were well done. Um, and so what I did is I sort of characterized by group the, the action items, the agendas, and the things that we wanted to do. And the first one was the department budget reviews. Again, uh, found that successful and the commission has agreed to take on commission members have agreed to take on at least two departments and so for the last month or so we've been working to identify some assignments ask you to prioritize those and we're at a place I think the assignments have been made I'll share that with you in a moment um, the other thing that we talked about was the membership on the budget advisory commission I think as a group you expressed the need to make sure that we had a complete board and that when the opportunity presented itself, we you know, provided to make sure that we had some diversity and perspectives and talent um, looking to provide some uh, you know, different perspectives on the board as seats might become available to make sure that we've got a broad perspective. So that is a task of the administration, but a, I think a recommendation from you. Um, you also recognize that it's important to provide some timely decisions on resolutions, um, doing everything we can to make sure that you have resolutions in front of you in a time that allows the assembly to consider them. Obviously, there are times that that is not always possible, so um, we're going to endeavor to do a better job this year. We talked about the times of the meetings. Uh, last year, we made an effort to change the meetings from one hour to 60 or from 60 minutes to one hour. You all felt that there was a benefit to that. So obviously we've continued that change. We haven't changed the dates. Um, and then um, obviously the chair and the vice chair wanted to put some time on for some uh, open discussion. So we've implemented that. The other thing that was mentioned, uh, you know, how did the virtual meetings go? And if we're in a place where we want to be able to meet in person, how should we proceed? And what I took away from that was if in the event through we have the ability to safely and um, meet in person for monthly meetings, 
we should look forward to doing that. But if in the event that um, uh, we're not, virtual meetings can be successful. And that if we have special meetings or work sessions, I think I heard that the commission would rather do those virtually, um, which can be proven to be very helpful, primarily because they're normally there on a short window. So if we have special meetings or special work sessions, and we do have the ability to meet in person, we're going to schedule those special meetings or those special work sessions uh, virtually, unless the chair or the commission wants to do them differently. So that will be our path. Um, so hopefully we later the year we will be able to get together, but if not, we're going to continue this process. And then as it relates to some special topics, last year was sort of unique. Uh, in 19, we had we talked about the alcohol tax and before that we talked about the gas tax. Last year was all about the CARES Act funding. We there is a possibility that um, the, the federal government will be issuing additional uh, resources to local jurisdictions, either directly or uh, through the state. So I think the one special topic that I'm aware of is that the federal government is looking at doing additional allocations to communities to, to fight the pandemic and get our economy uh, to shore up our economy. Those that's one topic that we'll do our best as a special topic. And obviously the alcohol tax has just kicked in. I think I heard from the commission that you wanted some updates on how the revenues are coming in and the allocation of expenses of those funds. So those will be some special topics we'll provide to you. Um, I guess before I go to the department review, uh, Madam Chair, is there anything that I missed uh, just sort of as a direction that you guys wanted to go at a general level? And, um, Thank you for that, Lance. I, I don't see anything missing, but I'd like to open the floor up in case anyone else. Uh, Jonathan, I see your hand raised. Yeah, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to thank uh, Mr. Wilbur for his uh, his work on this. That was a really great summary. I, I When you got to the point about special meetings being virtual um, and the fact that we can be effective, I, I just wanted to kind of plus one that and say thank you for including that because I do think that that's an effective and efficient use of our time. Um, with respect to in-person meetings, um, you know, I've, I frequently meet with clients or used to meet with clients and, and clients have started asking me about, you know, in-person kind of group meetings for the type of work that I do. And, and I have been telling them and building into my contracts that I will meet in person when everybody is vaccinated and when the community, whatever the community that I'm visiting falls below the uh, the CDC minimal community transmission threshold of less than five cases per 100,000 over uh, average over a 14 day period. So um, that I'm not, I'm not sure we necessarily need to put that into this document, but I would like to put it out there as uh, a a guideline for us to to follow and and clearly if the municipality were asking people to not meet in person that would be a factor in there too but that's that's the metric that i have been using within my business to tell people when i believe it, it will be safe to meet so um just thank you for all the work on that and thanks for the opportunity to provide commentary thank you and uh, anna has her hand raised anna go ahead yeah, thanks. Um, so first I concur with Jonathan, I put it in the chat, but also, um, you know, as part of my work or our firm's work, we do a lot of meeting facilitation and, but you know, pre-pandemic, um, it would be common to have like an in-person meeting and then a couple people on the phone. And I know that that's sometimes necessity, but I just want to underscore it's so much easier to have a good discussion if everybody's kind of on the same footing. Um, so, so in this case, all virtual. Um, so I would also just recommend that over over the idea of maybe blended meetings where half of us show up and the others are on the phone. It's just a hard it's a hard thing to track. So so better to for everybody to be on the same page if possible. Thanks. That's a great piece of feedback. I, I appreciate that as I was envisioning and um, kind of what our meetings might look like when we when we have the opportunity to meet. I, I do really appreciate your recommendations, Jonathan. I, I think that's a great. I want to say metric or a series of metrics to use to decide when and, and when and we will get back together and, and be in person again. Um, and, and I was thinking about the same thing. Well, you know, is it a situation where we have some people in person and some not? Um, and especially when we have the opportunity to actually 
discuss and go in depth about, you know, whether it's recommendations coming out of the BAC or, you know, covering a new topic or something like that. I think to the extent that it's possible to be in person and, and agree, the conversation definitely seems to flow uh, much better when, when we're able to do that as opposed to being online. Um, but I, I appreciate the feedback on, on the blending being harder. Um, and I seem to remember that from when we used to be in person and, and you know would have to have people kind of be on the phone because of travel or whatever the case may be. We, we did have uh, struggles in terms of people on the phone being able to participate and whatnot. So thank you for that. Any other comments on our, our 2021 action plan? Madam Chair, if I could go forward and just look at the departments real quick. Oh, please, um, yes. share that and then um, if you guys are amenable we'll we'll move forward um, and if you guys are agreeable and we'll make sure that these assignments at least work for now and if there are for some reason changes or if there's a different direction we can adjust so what what lila is sharing here is i asked everyone to provide their top three and some of you provided me your top eight uh recommendations um, to start on the left side, what we have is a list of the departments. The ones that are highlighted are the departments that were not selected by anyone. Um, that just as, a, as a, uh, a reference, not good or not bad, but no one selected those. Um, no, like this you doesn't have to memorize all of these algorithms if you want your times to really come down. Hi, uh, Cameron, we're, we're, uh, we have you not muted. Can you go ahead and mute yourself? Yep, thanks. Thanks. Um, and then what we what I did is uh, I, this graphic just shows uh, the departments that um, based on your suggestions, I did my best to try to give everybody their number one choice in every place. There were sometimes in some departments, economic and community development and one, where I had four people choose that as their number one choice. And rather than give four BAC members one relatively small department, um, if I had three or four people select it, I tried to put two people on it just to honor as many number one choices as I could. We had some people that um, had multiple choices. So, and many of you were flexible. So uh, what I've done here is illustrate, I think the departments I would like you guys to take on um, and real briefly. So Alyssa, you would have the library maintenance and operations and the port. And then Jonathan, you would have finance and fire. Anna, you would have the health department. And thank you, Anna, for your willingness to take that one on. And the planning department, as well as um, Merrill Field probably wouldn't be a lot of work. Um, but if you still willing to do that one, Anna, um, I think it would be worthwhile. Planning is not a heavy lift, um, particularly because I had like three people or four people that chose that as their number two choice. So um, I gave that one to you. And um, I also, maybe you could work with Nolan on that one. Uh, Lindsay, you were right out of the gate and uh, wanted to do the mayor, which is basically staff and grants, and then the municipal attorney and the municipal manager in their departments, as well as parks and rec. Frankly, the mayor and the municipal attorney is not that, not a lot of work. It's not heavy. Um, and then management is, but parks is. So Lindsay, if, if you're okay with that one, that would be your group. Um, Tasha, you had IT as your, I think your first choice. Um, I can't remember. I, it was either your first or your second. I can't recall. Cause I think you two had the mayor as selected. There's not a lot of work in the mayor, but there's a lot of work in IT and there's a lot of work in public works admin. They do all of the service areas. So if you are if you are comfortable with that, that those are good selections. And then Nolan, um, he uh, I gave him the economic and community development. He would team up with Jimmy on that one. Again, I had two other departments that uh, two other members that picked that. And then um, Nolan would also team up with Anna on planning but he's also willing to take on transit, which I appreciate. And then Carla, um, you would have internal audit and you would have uh, purchasing. Both of those are not uh, super heavy lifts. And then the community development authority. Um, that one, uh, I think is gonna be some, that's gonna be very interesting in 2021. So good choices on there. 
And then Jimmy, uh, the CFO's office, uh, you could team up with uh, Jonathan, or excuse me, with Nolan, and then also team up on finance. So ironically, I think uh, Nolan, Jimmy, and a couple others almost all have the same top three choices. And then James, uh, the assembly office, that's a, a good choice. We haven't had that reviewed. And then also the police department. So James, thank you very much for that. Um, I would say that about a third of those selections are the same as last year and two thirds are all new. Um, and this year, since you guys are willing to do a couple, um, I teamed you up. So this is what I'm gonna recommend we do. And if in the event that um, uh, some of you want to team up with another uh, another person and do that. I'm sure we can accommodate that. I'll start this process in May, start teaming you up, and we won't wait till July. But um, I think uh, if you guys are amenable to these selections, and again, I appreciate your flexibility. This is uh, this is the direction we'll be going, and the departments will choose. So, Madam Chair, I'll turn it back over to you and members of the commission if you'd like to uh, respond or change um, to your your choices. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lance and, and Lila. Really appreciate all of your work on this. We did have uh, Jonathan said that he's wondering if it makes sense for Jimmy to take finance on his own, and then uh, Jonathan can pick up uh, PM and E. And then Tasha said that she could do human resources as well. So I don't, uh, I don't know if either of you want to come off mute and uh, and make a comment or anything, but just wanted that to be on the record. I think it's a great so I think it's a great suggestion uh, to Jonathan. Jimmy, uh, if are you uh, um, was there a number willing to still just take on finance? I'm going to go silence is yes. Is, so, Jimmy, I, is Jimmy here? I was just about to say that. I don't think Jimmy is here right now. I, think I don't think Jimmy's here. Well, that's the benefit of uh, <laughs> he'll do. He'll do great taking on finance. Yeah. Um, we have full confidence in him. Jonathan, uh, taking on PM and E is really all about the capital budget. I mean, it's really about the road road budget, and they have some water, um, the NTBS permit. So we'll give you PM and E. And Tasha, you're willing to take on HR? Is that what I heard? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you'll have HR, IT. And public works admin that's a good mix that's a really good mix uh, direct service departments and two support departments and one of them that supports everybody thank you tasha so i think carla has asked a really good question in the chat which is you know she says some of these departments were highlighted last year should we skip them this year and take on those that haven't been picked and i think that's part of my reasoning for trying to i mean i i like the finance department i'd be happy to go back there it was my number one choice to go back there just because i thought it made sense but on the other hand you know, making sure that everybody gets covered. I'm willing to rotate off finance and and honestly to pick up whatever Lance thinks is most important to be picked up on the remainder, not necessarily PM and E. And so I guess Lance, there is a good question that a couple of us are at least thinking about is okay. are there places where you might suggest we rotate off and, and yep. grab uh some yes. of the spare stuff? Yes. So um while PM and E might be interesting, AWU would be very interesting. AWWU, uh, one of our utilities, I think is, um, they got a lot going on. I probably, yeah, they do. utilities, that is the most, that is gonna be busy. I'm happy to rotate off finance and over to AWWU. Literally take my thing off finance, if, if it's okay with Jimmy to take finance alone and put me where okay. you think I should go. You're going to AWU. Thank you. And um, to Carla's point, you know, I don't mind a little repetition. Um, I, uh, uh, and I think doing finance two years in a row, but having two different commissioners do it, probably not a bad idea. And Carla, I do believe that your choices are, um, I think you got some good choices. I think all of those, um, I think you're filling a spot where we didn't touch last year, so I hope that you can stick to those. And we also had a comment from Anna. Real estate, also interesting, HLB and muni lands is the question. And then we have James has a has his hand raised, and I wanted to make sure we give him time. Yeah, I didn't see my third pick on there. Maybe, I'm, maybe there's more to it, but 
Um, I think when I originally sent in my request, one of them was um, the Equal Rights Commission. And if I don't have a third one listed, you can put me down for that. You, you do have a third, Jimmy. You have the Economic yeah. and Community I'm Development. I'm Jimmy. I'm James. I'm James. I'm James. Oh, James. I'm sorry. Um, honestly, James, if you want to take on the Equal Rights Commission as a third choice, um, that's a, not a lot of work. That would be a good one to touch. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'm sorry if I missed that. My mistake. And then Anna, we did real estate last year. Uh, you're welcome to take a look at it yourself. Um, I think uh, Anna or um, yeah, if you want to do real estate for interest, it, I'll set it up. OK, yeah, I, I don't know if I should take on a fourth um, at this point, but <laughs> I just wanted to flag it that it would be interesting uh, to look at. I, I think uh, yeah. Um, Jimmy had it last year um, and uh, he reviewed it, so I think you yeah, I think the ones that you have right now are, are good. And if for some reason you have capacity and you want to do another one, let's pick it up later. OK, yeah, that sounds right. good. Thanks. OK. All right, so we have Jonathan down to AWU and then we've added the Equal Rights Commission to James. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yeah, uh, echo. Everyone's sentiments. This is it's an it's an, a large undertaking. So we really appreciate you and Lila going out of your way to make sure that everything gets covered and give us direction on on what you think is best and what needs attention and isn't getting it. Uh, so next on the agenda, we've got um, Anchorage School District. Okay, thank you. Um, so the school board had met and passed our budget that was presented to you on your February 4th meeting as uh, we presented it to them. So we really don't have any updates as far as changes that we were we actually made to the, the budget document. Um, we did include on the assembly request a little under $38 million to account for the unfunded bond debt from the governor's FY21 budget or the the 20 or the 21 budget that cut the 100 percent i think it was the 21. um so we are going to make up that uh 38 million dollar or so deficit in this uh 2021 tax year but with that we provided a re resolution recommending the uh, the uh, the approval of the district budget and i guess i'll turn that over for discussion unless uh, i saw miss marcet on here or board member marcet if she has anything to add as well uh no, and I'm sorry, my dog is barking right now. Um, no, I don't think there's anything to add. I think you've uh, already presented the budget, Andy. So if anybody just has any questions. Open it up to the floor. Does, any, does anyone have any questions for Ms. Morissette? Hearing none, I don't see any hands raised either, so. All right, thank you. We appreciate you being here and, and making yourself available, so thank you. Of course. Madam Chair, this is Lance. Um, I think when I we sent this out, we got a question from Jonathan uh, as and I believe Andy had made some adjustments to the one question he had. So um, I think it was a pretty small word change. Jonathan, I wanted to make sure that you're whereas, I believe you had the fifth one, there was some wordsmithing that you wanted to get done. Just if you could take a look at that one particularly and make sure that it uh, met your needs. Right, and I can, you know, I can say our intent for this was to highlight the total decrease uh, in our tax request on the fiscal year basis. We're requesting about 470,000 less than uh, what was on fiscal year 2021 request. Thank you, Andy. So are there any questions regarding the, the resolution? And 
Cindy, I'm not seeing any any hands raised or any comments. I don't think I think we've got any questions. Well, it's been very well written. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. Appreciate it. We, we really appreciate them. They do a great job. So Madam Chair, what I'll need is um, if the commission is uh, uh, agreeable to the, to the proposal here, we'll need a motion, a second, a vote. Um, and uh, since we're doing it uh, virtually, you can ask for any objections. If there are objections, then we'll do a hand count. Um, and then what I'll do is I will uh, help the, uh, well, actually we'll put together an informational memorandum. We'll send it to the assembly. The assembly will be looking at the school district's budget next Tuesday night, and we will make sure that the assembly is apprised of the BAC's position on the budget uh, with an information memorandum, assuming you approve this resolution. So that will be our path forward. Excellent. Thank you, Lance. So do we have a motion to approve? This is Anna. I'll move to approve. Thank you, Anna. Do we get a second? I'll second it. This is James. Thank Smallwood. you, James. All right. Any objections? Okay. Hearing none. Resolution motion to approve the resolution has passed. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Andy. Nice work. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, guys. We always appreciate the BAC support. And I'll uh, I agree with that. Thank you. Okay. So next up on the agenda, are we are we ready to move on to the assembly report? I think so. Take it away. OK, well, hi, everyone. Um, I am uh, sitting in for Suzanne today as she is getting her second COVID shot, which is very exciting. Um, and I don't have much uh, today. I'm I, one thing I wanted to, to make sure to mention is that, you know, we are we are working. Um, we are coming up very soon upon our first quarter budget re re revisions. So those um, will be introduced on April 13th. There'll be um, um, uh, there'll be an, an opportunity to have uh, a couple of work sessions on those on the 16th and on the 23rd, and so um, it, it'll be nice to to have in, input from the, um, the the BAC on that. Also, there was a request, and I think Chair, you received this um, from Ms. LaFrance to to have have a discussion in this meeting in terms of economic recovery, um, and love to hear feedback from this this the, the, this group on ideas and suggestions as we begin to move into a to, to a time where um, um, we are we are getting a better handle on the covid situation and we're going to be thinking more and more about important steps to be taking to recover our economy here in, Ang in anchorage um, and so th those are the two things that i wanted to make sure to to to, to mention and i'm available for any questions and I'll stay for the whole meeting so I can make sure that I'm uh, aware of everything that's going on. So thanks. Thank you very much for the update. Really appreciate it. Uh, we have a question from Carla. I have to get unmuted here. Uh, we may have covered this previously, but um, I just uh, heard it on the news again today and I'm wondering what the status is of the CARES Act money being used to buy the properties. So I think I heard on the news that that's no longer happening um, and that we're using money from the general fund to buy the building. Yeah, I, I can right? I can have Lance explain the the sort of the the um, the 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 process and, and reasoning behind that um, uh, in terms of where the money flows from. And, and there is still an intention to um, to look for facilities. We have purchased the, the Golden Lion. Um, and and um, and I and I don't know if we've finalized Beans Cafe yet, but that is certainly um, move, moving forward. And the other two pro properties that were originally proposed, the Alaska Club on Tudor 
and the um, the hotel on Spinard, um, America's Best. Um, those two we are not move, moving forward on after the the assessments were, were done on both those f facilities. They they um, were not v viable cho choices for us. So there is an active effort right now to identify new locations for both of those same purposes. So there is an intention to 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 continue to use funds to identify facilities in both those those areas. Um, and then Lance, do you want to explain sort of how the money moved from um, CARES Act to our op operating budget and how that's be being used? Yes, thank you, uh, Assembly Member Press Perdia. Um, what what has happened at the end at the end of the year? So all of the CARES funds that came to the municipality, we were able to expend um, a significant portion of the 156 million in the time frame that at the point we had to basically all spend by the end of the year. And if we didn't, we would lose the opportunity to expend it. One of the things that the Treasury Department encouraged us to do is basically to apply those funds to our um, uh, uh, first responder payroll. Mm -hmm. um, the long and the short of it is, Carla, is that since we were not able to spend the, as a categorized as CARES funds in the uh, four properties and other places, we used those dollars, um, the CARES funds, to basically support first responder payroll. What that, in effect, did is it freed up um, fund balance or dollars that would have been used for uh, first responder payroll. So the intentions of the assembly and the administration were to uh, use the CARES Act funds and to buy buildings. The intentions are um, at the end of the year, we basically turn the CARES Act funds into fund balance or general funds and um, so that we did not lose them. And so uh, they are not, uh, the color of the money is not CARES funds now, the color of the money is general funds, and we had to do that based on the, the timeline that we were faced with and the Treasury guidance. Um, and so we do, as Assemblymember Perez Perdia uh, described, the administration and the Assembly are still looking to purchase um, other buildings and, and through due diligence, we will be looking at those, and as he mentioned, the one on Tudor and the one on Spinard through our due diligence, we were not able to buy those buildings as we originally planned before the end of the year, but we still do plan to buy buildings, if that makes sense. Thank you. Um, also, I'm just wondering, have, does the Assembly have a plan for maintenance of these buildings in the future and where that money will come from? Yeah, and I and and again, that there's a there's a, a the 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 buildings are, are are different in terms of you know the 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 gold the gold the golden lion that per purchase was not used, CARES Act money was not used for that, um, and um, and so there's a difference in terms of the money that's being used for the the, the buildings. But yes, it's it's my my understanding that that there is is a plan in place, and we can get more information. J Jason ba 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 Bakkenstead would be a great resource for the, this committee to come and, and share more information about the long term plan in terms of of how those how those facilities are going to be um, um, funded. And, and I think it's there, 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 there's, there's a different plan depending, depending on the building um, and, and the access to, um, to funding, um, whether it's the use of, of our own funds or it's funds that's earned by that f facility. For instance, the Golden Lion would, would be a facility that, that over a relatively short period of time, it's our belief that that would be a sustainable op operation. Um, through the through the f f funding that's able to be c captured because of the services that are being provided there. But I'll also hand it over to Lance to see if he wants to add, add anything to that. Yes, I will just add that um, I will, uh, I'll talk to Mr. Bach instead. And in the meantime, um, uh, Carla, there's a, the, the operator of the building, uh, let me just start at a higher level. The plan is, is that um, initially there'll be a partnership probably with uh, local dollars, I think some CARES funds as well, um, or uh, fund balance funds that were previously CARES to provide support. But many of these facilities will be operated by nonprofits. And so um, the, the uh, 
operations of the facility and the services would either be through nonprofits or grants from other locations. But um, as Mr. Presbordia mentioned, I'll um, talk to Mr. Bach instead and see if we can't get a simple outline for uh, the facility and the uses, because I know that uh, those questions have come up in the past, but definitely provide some information on that for you. Thank you for your question, Carla, and, and thank you, Lance and SMR member Presvardia for your answers. We have a question from Jonathan. Sorry about that. Uh, just having to get to the unmute. So I'm, I'm thinking about this, you know, we couldn't execute this under CARES, and so we used that CARES money to then uh, pay for first responder salaries, which was allowed. That freed up the fund balance. Now we're looking at slightly different properties. Is there, is there a monetary differential between the properties we were looking at and these properties? Because, uh, you know, I know that one of the big controversies in the, in the community right now is that that money would have been, there's a perception, right? And, or an opinion, it's not a perception, I'm gonna call it an opinion, right? That money would have been better used directly supporting, um, you know, businesses and, and, and the economy and, and the people of Anchorage in a way other than purchasing these buildings. So I guess what I'm asking is given how much everything has changed, is there fund balance money left over that is unallocated that could be used to more direct support the economy as we come out of, uh, you know, not the economy, but really businesses and people as we come at, come out of this. It's kind of assuage and maybe, um, I don't know if it's, it's makeup's not the right word, but you guys see where I'm, I'm going here. So I'll just stop okay. with that and say, what's the status on that? Yeah, and I'll, I'll I, I, let me start by, by just saying that, that the, the process of initially de de deciding about how to allocate the 156 million was a fairly lengthy and thoughtful pro pro process that involved lots of community meetings that involved many work sessions but you know organizations coming in and and meeting with economists and meeting with um, a, a wide variety of folks who, who really helped us to think through how to thoughtfully distribute those funds then a a um, a matrix matrix was was developed to look at what are those core areas of our city that we really need to make sure that we're investing in um, whether it's housing or child care um, you know so so that that was done um, and and one of the areas that was really important to us was ensuring that we are um, addressing some of our most vulnerable pop, pop population the uh, and I, I don't know if I have the percentage right so Lance you can you can correct me but it was it was something near only 10 percent of those cares act funds were allocated towards these um, these fa facilities. So, so it's it's a relatively small percentage overall compared to the the the, the, the package. Um, I would just 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 say that that I I continue to to believe that that that's an important in an in investment, both really to address the both the the immediate needs that we're seeing and the long term Im impacts that are coming from COVID. And so, so I would I would say that 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 from my stance, um, ensuring that we continue to follow through and using that that small pot of money out of the CARES Act funds and investing it into um, really long term and short term solutions for our homeless sit situation is, is important. Um, and so that's that's sort of where I where I stand with it. Um, and we continue to, as as you know. Um, distribute um, as much of the funds as we possibly can to those key areas, whether that's housing or child care or, or t tourism, um, and that and that can can, can, can continues to go out. Um, but I don't see a lot of, uh, if if you would, extra funds um, for us to 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 use. If if if, if there are, we're going to use them. So, Lance, do you, you want to add to that? Just a couple of points. I do believe that your percentage um, is accurate of the 100, you know, 156 million, 12 was set aside for the buildings initially. And um, to Jonathan's point about the cost of the facilities that are being looked at, um, I do not know the answer to, the, to that question. Um, if in the event the administration and the assembly want to you know, reallocate the remaining dollars that are there, because some of that 12 million has been spent, um, not a significant amount of it, then that would take the action of the assembly and the administration to actually reallocate those dollars. We're also very hopeful and um, keeping very mindful of additional dollars coming in 
to support the other needs that we had most we heard about. And I think just this week there's in, um, the ability that we will be able to use some federal dollars um, either on the way or currently to support individuals that are having problems paying their utility bills. The, we actually, the bills will go straight to the utility. Um, and then if there still needs some assistance for uh, rental assistance, it goes straight to the property owner. It doesn't go to the, uh, and, and, um, so it would go to the landlord. So um, the, the CARES Act, the 156 is not the uh, final, um, dollars that we anticipate coming in and that's why I included I think is one of the special topics that the BAC wants to be mindful of um, not only keeping track of where the dollars are currently been spent but if we do have more dollars coming in where they might be spent so um, hopefully that answered both Carla's question and Jonathan's question yeah, yeah. I, I pre appreciate it both from the opportunity to discuss the differential in any differential in monies and also for, to have assembly member Perez Verdia really explain in detail it's kind of the administrative record there right about how the decision came to be what the portions were why the decision was made um and and just to remind everybody of you know how we got to where we got thank you Thank you both. This is a fantastic conversation, so I very much appreciate your your questions and responses. I am curious, um, the BAC, would folks be interested in having um, any sort of special session on the economic impact of supporting the various sectors that um, that the assembly particularly chose to fund? Um, or is that uh, you know a bit overkill? Are we satisfied with the answers and responses that that we've gotten so far? I know we had a great special session um, recently about about the economic impact and, and of other parts of, of COVID. Um, so I wanted to throw that out to people and, and see if anybody has any thoughts or responses. I think uh, as much information as we can get is, is a good thing. So I would support it. Yeah, I would be interested to hear a little bit more detail on that. OK, and I am Jonathan, I did just see your message as well, saying that it's important to stay forward focused. Um, and what's the work that needs to be done for the future? One of my thoughts on on kind of throwing this out as a suggestion is if we understand how, you know, funding that goes to housing and, and child support, um, you know, uh, assisting with homelessness, how that impacts, um, you know, our economy. And what are the you know the long term and short term impacts of that? I thought it might better give us um, information as we move forward on you know do we think that this is enough or do we think um, you know and, and need to to then move on and give you know more toward business assistance and and those sorts of things. Okay, I am seeing your comment as well. Yeah, I, I think that this will help us kind of set the stage for some of those um, recommendations that the assembly requested in terms of. How are we going to move forward? What does recovery look like and those sorts of things? Um, and then Anna, I'm seeing you have a comment. Sounds like what we've done and why is part one followed by where are the gaps and how this is changing as part two? I well put, well put. Um, yeah, uh, assembly member, please, please feel oh, free. I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, I, I, I like that idea as well. And I think that, um, you know, um, it's really important to me that that the discussion of you know the process that we went through and the basis that was used to make the decisions that, that we're making that that's not in a defense right that's just that's that's the process we we did and and there is some real value in looking back on that a bit and going was it right you know did was the dis, di, distribution done in the right way and what impact did it have or did it not not have and so I I think that there's some value in sort of looking at that that a bit. But but especially as it relates to mo moving forward and making really thoughtful cho choices about how to to continue to recover our economy, and um and and this is a great group of folks to 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 to, to advise that, um and so I'd I'd love to to participate in that in that in that in that work and and to and to really be thinking about um, really strategic cho cho choices. That was our that was our attempt. Our attempt was to be really strategic about the the very relatively small amount of money that we had and how to use it in the most impactful way um and so i think that th that theme really can continues for me is 
is how to make really thoughtful strategic choices about about how to um, support the, the the recovery and growth of our economy. And so thanks for that as a suggestion and and I'm so certainly willing to to participate as well. Thank you. We greatly appreciate that. Um, I think in the interest of time, we need to move on to our our next um, item on the agenda, which is the OMB um, overview. But I really wanted to say thank you to Assembly Member Perez, Perez Verdia, forgive me, uh, for being here and, and answering all of our questions. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thanks so much. And thank, thank you for all your, your work. It's, it's much appreciated. All right, Madam Chair, are you ready to go on to OMB? A couple highlights yes, here, real please. quick. Okay. Please. Uh, I think uh, Assembly Member Perez Berdia mentioned the first quarter budget revisions. He mentioned the dates of the 13th, the 16th, and the 23rd. Those are all April dates. They are not March dates. Just to be clear, um, uh, right now where we are in the in the first quarter budget revision status is all the departments have submitted all of their requests to us. Um, the assembly is working through their committees to provide uh, committee suggestions for budget revisions and the chair <clears throat> has uh, agreed to send those to us by next Friday. Um, right now, the departments are uh, reviewing their revenue projections for 2021. We make projections last year based on efforts and activities. The departments are to revise their projections now. Uh, those are due to us tomorrow. And then we have already received the uh, projections from Treasury. Uh, they provide us projections for all variety of revenues, um, bed tax, alcohol, um, all of the uh, investments from when we build the budget, we ask them to take a look at that. It, my initial look, I got it last week. My initial look is uh, the total dollar amount is really not changing. It might be plus or minus 100,000 out of 500 million. Um, but the uh, where it's coming from is getting tweaked a little bit. So I'm going to take a closer look at that. I want to particularly are interested if any of those are changing inside the tax cap. And obviously, if those dollar numbers have grown, then the amount of property taxes uh, would then be less. But we've received those and we're putting that together. Right now, we are looking at the department submissions. We're asking them questions and then we will be working with the administration to figure out what, uh, one, how much money, if any, do we have to add? And if we have the ability to add some things, um, what do we add? Right now I have got uh, probably half a dozen requests um, and uh, I think all but one of them is new. Uh, I have one request that a department requested and they were not able to get it. So working through those um, and until I can get some guidance from the administration, I don't have the ability to, to share them yet, but I will as soon as I possibly can. The schedule is um, through this month, OMB, through probably um, through the primary at the end of this month in March and the first week of April is when decisions will be made at the administration's level because that is when we will know how 2020 ended in fund balance. And when I say the fund balance, I mean the amount of money that is in fund balance that is not already planned for for the um, those CARES Act programs that we talked about. So that's uh, there's a this is really going to be a busy season for us. Um, so your April meeting is April 1st. Um, I don't know if I'll have the first quarter revisions available for your review at that date. Frankly, I do not think I will. What I would like to suggest is as we look ahead, you might want to have a special meeting either on the 8th or on the 15th to look at the first quarter budget revisions. Um, and so uh, you can plan on the 1st my my sense is the the 15th is uh, the day we will be two days after the administration gives it to the assembly and a day before I am scheduled to give the assembly a, a briefing on it. So um, let's let's think about that right now. The reason I won't be able to share it on the first is I don't know if the administration 
Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure the administration will not have had time to make decisions because the fund balance number is not available until the last week of March. So we got some quick turnaround times uh, before us. So that's the status of the first quarter budget revisions. Hey, Lance, I have a question. You, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Fair. This is Lindsay. Um, so are you, what is the idea that we would move the meeting or that we would have a second meeting? Um, well, honestly, Lindsay, that's a good question. I, I think that um, that is the topic for April. I don't know if having two is going to be fruitful, but let me look at the Actually, on on the on the lens of it, I don't think there's anything else on your April agenda unless it's an informational item, except first quarter. So that's a good idea. We might want to just move it instead of having two, but uh, I haven't thought about it yet. Well, I just know for myself, I will be unable to attend the April one meeting. So I mean, I would I would support, or I don't know if it requires a motion or or what to make that change, but I would be in support of it. I don't think it requires a motion. What I would do is um, I'll uh, survey first. Let me look and see what's on your agenda. Let me survey the members, um, Madam Chair, and then if there's amenable to make an adjustment to make the April meeting more uh, efficient and timely for first quarter, we can proceed with that. That's a good idea. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, Anna had a question. Yeah, and actually it was basically the same suggestion and I'm available for both meetings if we have to but um but yeah it seems like the timing's better to move it to the 8th unless like you said there's any other business items and or if there is any background or kind of you know in progress that you could provide because I don't know if we would want more than an hour and a half to dedicate to that anyway so anyway I'll, I'm fine with either and I'm happy to make a motion if that's helpful I, I don't think a motion is helpful. I think in the past, Madam Chair, and I, um, I don't object to a motion. I just don't. I don't think it's necessary, but it's up to you. I think we can go ahead with with what we've done in the past uh, with Lila putting out a I'm assuming a doodle poll, um, but it sounds like most I'm, I'm not seeing any objections to moving the meeting to the eighth. Um, so if Lila, if you're able to send out a poll and, and we can see if that works for everyone. We can do that. Excellent. OK, uh, so I think Lance, if if that is it for the OMB report, we can move on to audience participation. If we have anyone from the audience who would who would like to participate, I'll open the floor. I do not uh, looking at the attendees. I don't think we have anyone um, from the public on. I just I see two phone numbers and I think one of them is Carl. I'm not sure who the other one is, so I just want to make sure we gave some time just in case. OK, um, well, not hearing anyone. Let's move on to item number eight, open discussion. Um, and I know we ha we've had some great discussion thus far. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to see. Oh, thank you, Tasha. I see the, the other phone numbers here. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to open it up to any any discussion that folks might have. We've covered a handful of topics today. If there are any we want to circle back to. Sorry, I muted myself. Anna, go ahead. And then Jonathan. Thanks. Um, so this is mostly a general plug, but also related to, um, you know, the getting the economy back on track, which is that um, in the last week or so, there's been a huge increase in availability of vaccines um, or, or I should say more people are eligible than than before. And especially through the um, the tribal health system um, that a lot more people have been able to access, at least in Anchorage. So just reminder to folks who haven't gotten vaccinated yet and, and are inclined to do so that there's a lot more opportunities through um, through South Central Foundation, through ANMC, through the state, through Anchorage. So just check it out. And that's really exciting, um, as we've talked about before, to getting the economy moving. Thank you, Anna. Jonathan, did you did you have a comment? 
Um, yeah, well, first of all, the plus one, what Anna said, um, my wife was uh, got vaccinated on Tuesday night through South Central uh, with their opening up and, and very a painless process. Um, so, you know, just encouraging people, anybody that might be listening and anybody that's on the commission who um, meets the current qualifications of, of 40 plus at South Central and 55 plus uh, through the state system to, to go and, and get vaccinated if you're so inclined. Uh, but really, the comment that I, I wanted to make is um, I represented the BAC at the last um, Assembly uh, Budget Commission. Was it, what is it? The Budget Committee meeting. Um, and one of the things that I heard during that committee meeting was that Eric Larson, uh, the longtime um, economic analyst for the city, is apparently leaving. I suspect he's retiring. Um, and I, I would like to um, put forth a, a recommendation that the Budget Advisory Commission at its next meeting um, uh, pass a resolution honoring Eric for his long service to the city uh, in the in the areas of um, you know sort of budget and economics. He is he is like the quiet rock star of uh, of the kind of the economic set <laughs> in. Um, in Anchorage, he's been around a long time. He's done a lot of great work. He's a, and he is just like a salt of the earth guy. So I just want to kick that out there that um, a little something a little different for us to do, and also a really worthy thing is is to recognize Eric officially for his service. Um, and so thanks for the opportunity to kick that out there. Thank you, Jonathan. I, I'm seeing a lot of support for it in in the chat. I think that's a, a fantastic suggestion. Um, yeah, that is that is in my time on the BAC that seems unique, but I, I don't think it's it's poorly placed. So I think that's a great suggestion. Um, Madam Chair and members, I will draft it. Uh, I'll send it to you. I could not think of a, a, that is an excellent idea. As a matter of fact, the assembly has a resolution honoring Eric's work um, at their meeting next Tuesday night. And Eric's last day was February 25th. Um, and so while the assembly, I think, will be doing recognition, Eric will not be there to receive it, um, but um, maybe Mr. Slifka will be there on his behalf. And uh, I can plus five all of the things that Jonathan mentioned. Eric is so valuable to the Office of Management Budget. He's so valuable to um, the Treasury Department and Dan Moore. Um, he is... A, he is an incredible asset to the municipality. He was, and um, I know that uh, I know that it will be well received if we can. Uh, we when we get him a copy of the resolution, so uh, we'll get it drafted. We'll send it to you, and then um, uh, we'll get the chair to set, sign it, and then we'll get it to Mr. Larson. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you to Lance and and Leila for your work on that. We really appreciate it, and thank you, Jonathan, for the suggestion. Okay, um, I did want to bring up um, before we before I move on um, the assembly's request for suggestions um, coming out of the BAC on on what might we do in order to help Anchorage uh, recover as we hopefully continue to to make progress and move past the pandemic. Um, you know, we talked about a potential special session looking at what we did, why we did it, you know, what's what's the expected economic impact of the actions that were taken and then putting that in the context of where are the gaps, where are we going to go uh, and going through the, the thought process of what is it that we want to impact and where do we want to go um, as a city and then what are the actions that are going to get us there. Did, did we want to try to um, have a special session on that um, in the somewhat near future? What are people's thoughts on, on how we want to continue that conversation and then provide feedback back to the assembly? I <laughs> Jonathan, I, I do agree. <laughs> I was expecting someone um, to say something. You're all muted, FYI. <laughs> um, Madam, Madam Chair, if, I, if this is Nolan, if, if I if Please. I could, could you can you kind of can you kind of restate your question? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the crux of my question was really, do we want to schedule a special session in order to really take a, a look at and have a, an in-depth conversation amongst ourselves about what what do we want to impact? What do we want the, the recovery to look like? And what are the actions that we think might get us there? Um, Tasha is, is mentioning that she'd like the idea of a, a special work session with the, with the idea of going over. No, forgive me, Nolan, you you may not have been here when we uh, when it was brought up. I I forget when you came in, um, but to really take a look at um, what the assembly did. Why did they do it? So kind of just a, a recap of what assembly member Perez Verdia mentioned earlier about what was funded, why was it funded, and what was the intended economic impact of that? Maybe even looking into a little bit um, more depth of, you know, this is what we tend to see in economies when we support a reduction in homelessness. This is what we expect to see from an economic standpoint when we support child care. And just, just a little bit of that background conversation about what was done and then to continue that and focus on, OK, so this is what was done. Where where do we want to go? What might the recommendations be that we get back to the assembly about actions that we think that they should take to further support the recovery of Anchorage as the as hopefully the pandemic wanes. So the question is, do we want to have a special session on that? Um, we also have a few minutes now if we wanted to start that conversation, but we could um, we could just say yes or no about about a special session. We have been asked to provide some some recommendations uh, by the assembly, so wanted to throw that out there. Oh, Nolan, yes, please question. Sure. What I mean, one one idea, one kind of thing to think about is um, is our role as as BAC. Um, and I know I know a, a lot of us really like the economic, the broader economic recovery, broader economic conversation. But I but I think I think we might be most effective kind of zeroing in on the on the fiscal aspects of it or the budgetary aspects of it. Maybe um, there are there are definitely some like economic recovery kinds of conversations that are going on with the um, economic resiliency task force and the uh, um, there's the there's the R RVSA effort that uh, I've, I've been a part of that stands for something that I'm kind of blanking. Um, um, but uh, but but yeah, and I, I don't know. So budgetary and fiscal issues and how we can kind of zero in on those maybe maybe would be more effective for us. I, I agree. I, I um and I, I don't want to dominate. So if anyone else has a has a comment, please um, feel free to just unmute and hop in. But I I think your point is very well taken, Nolan. And I think that in terms of suggestions that we can give back to the assembly, I think framing it in um, framing it as these are suggestions for what the assembly can do within um, you know within the the scope of the the budget. Um, so I guess I I see them as being um, complementary there, um, especially as we look at what funds might be coming, um, you know, additional CARES funds, things like that. All right, now we've got some <laughs> some folks who want to speak up. So we have Anna and then Jonathan. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I like the idea of, of thinking about it, um, you know, more with more within our scope, I guess, um, but also just wanted to flag. It would be interesting to talk a little bit in that uh, meeting about um, what what if any opportunities there are for tax relief and then what the implications of that would be because I've, I've heard that come up a lot um, you know just as a well why don't we you know give property tax relief or what you know in, in terms of helping um, businesses and property owners but I think um, there's more to unpack there so I would um, I would be interested just to understand the implications of, of a policy like that excellent thank you Jonathan yeah I, I I don't want us to, uh, in in some ways, negotiate against ourselves here. Um, I mean, I recognize that we are the Budget Advisory Commission, but but we have a specific request from uh, an Assembly member uh, in in Suzanne LaFrance. It was it was emailed um, when she said that she wasn't going to be able to make today's meeting. She asked for our input in this area about how to engender a stronger economic recovery. And you know, the Assembly has come to this commission. Uh, before and asked that question, uh, in particular when it came to the CARES Act funding, they came to ask, they they asked us and called individual members and asked our opinion in these areas. And, and I would like us to kind of maybe take a little bit of a broader view here. Yes, we have to remember the budget, but there is 
specific, you know, this the commission members um, have, a, you know, have a skill set uh, that they bring to the table. And, you know, in Nolan and in Alyssa, you know, we have people who are um, economic development specialists, you know, and, 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 in, and in Carla and Jimmy, you know, we have um, people that are in the private sector, right, and work for private sector or own private sector companies. And so I think that we can have a, a really grounded discussion in actions that the municipality should be looking to take that will that will promote a faster recovery. And I think that we're being asked to step into that arena. And I kind of think that we should, you know, rise to the occasion. It's not as if we're stepping outside of our lane, out of our own choice, you know, where where somebody is asking us to to step forward and kind of expand our lane, at least for a moment here. So I just want to kind of put that put that forward. Thank you for, for those thoughts, Jonathan. I, I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to make sure we give time. Lindsay, go, you can go ahead and looks like we have a comment as well. Um, okay, sorry, just really quick. So I under sorry, through the chair, uh, this is Lindsay. Um, I understood that, um, you know, sort of our role in terms of looking at um, you know, where funds could be used to sort of stem um, economic recovery would be helping the, you know, as more CARES Act funding comes in from subsequent bills, um, you know, at the state and federal level, how to best distribute and allocate those funds to, you know, help help us recover. And so in that way, as you said, it does tie back, you know, pretty closely to the budget and, you um, you know, I think that it would be definitely a worthwhile exercise to the extent, I mean, we have already done this. So I guess if, if that information has changed or we have additional, um, you know, avenues we can explore, then I think it would be beneficial. Thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate that. And I did, um, and Nolan and I, was, as I was thinking about your, your comment and concern, I, I guess one thing that I, I do want to make sure of is you mentioned several other groups that are focusing on economic development and economic recovery. And so I do want to make sure that what we are endeavoring to do potentially doesn't uh, that we're not reinventing the wheel that, you know, if these groups are already doing this, then that we are providing our feedback from either a different lens um, or, or providing, a, you know, our scope is somehow different from theirs. And so in your participation in those groups, can can you help us understand if in fact we are doing different work in some way or are we just retreading um, you know, the the same the same tracks? I understand if the assembly wants to come to us and is asking, then perhaps we are able to provide feedback from a different lens and and I really do appreciate your comments there, Jonathan, that, you know, we've been asked, we, we may as well try to be as helpful as we can. But I, but Nolan, can you speak at all to the fact um, or to the to the idea that are we doing different work in some way or, or do you think that this is just kind of retreading the same ground? Uh, yeah, it, you know, it, admittedly, I'm, I'm kind of mulling this over and thinking, you know, maybe partly out loud on it. Um, I, I do appreciate the point about the assembly, you know, specifically asking us and having that request and fulfilling that request. And we do have a lot of, you know, the knowledge and skills in house. Um, I, I do. I, I, I would say that that um, we, we probably have to think about uh, how how our contribution it looks different from some of the other efforts happening. Right. And 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 um, how do we how do we provide something that that you know either complements or provides some kind of a, a missing perspective right uh, as far as as far as what we should do for economic recovery so that's that's kind of what i'm mulling over you know in my head right now thank you and i i, I mean i think that these kind of open discussion sessions are are good space for that for bringing up things um as we're thinking about them and then talking them through with each other. So I, I'm glad that we're having um, these discussions and appreciate everyone's participation. Jonathan just put a comment out that perhaps part of our role is to hear from those other voices and introduce them to the assembly. And Jonathan, I had a similar thought um, as as Nolan was talking about, you know, would it be wise to try and ask uh, when we have our special session to ask for representatives and, and Nolan, uh, forgive me, if you are on both of them, then, I, you know, hopefully you could ask act as that representative. But to the extent that we might need to reach out to those groups and have someone 
um, if they are able, sit in on our special session so that we can have their perspective, understand what it is that they are covering so that we can, um, you know, either help provide a more nuanced um, recommendation or at least know what's being said within these other groups and then echo them if, if that is appropriate or provide a different perspective, um, whichever is most appropriate. Any any other comments on this? I appreciate that the, the conversation. Okay, Tasha, uh, yeah, please. It's uh, um, uh, Nolan again, if I if I could, Madam Chair. I I um, I think you know maybe maybe there is a role for us to sort of play a like a, a review and and distill what's been proposed by by some of the other groups so far. What some of the ideas are, right? Um, for, for us to provide a little bit of a critical eye, you know, the ERTF, you know, has proposed these things. RVSA, I think, is much more um, in, in progress right now, but I think there are probably at least some directions that could be pointed to, and, and maybe we can uh, sort of encapsulate what they've been talking about, providing our own sort of critical eye and input on it, and, um, and maybe providing something like that to the assembly. I, I appreciate that, and I, I definitely see the value in that. Um, I think you know we we come from a position um, of of being of having an opportunity to to speak to the assembly on on multiple occasions a month, and so I think yeah, to the extent that we can understand the work that's being done, and um, I like that review it and distill it. I think that's a very good way of putting it. Tasha, thank Please you. Go ahead. Um, so I think I've mentioned this before, but I feel like it relevant to the conversation is that with the CARES money is using it to address existing issues that we've had, uh, like the homeless issue, or, you know, stimulating or maintaining our economy, like where's the balance? Because I feel like that's the conversation that I've heard where um, we could do better, and I'm not sure how we could do better, but I feel like um, that's a worthy part of this conversation. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, yeah, and I and I I see a big part of the of understanding kind of the economic impact of what was done and the discussion of why it was done. Why did the assembly take the actions that they did? Um, I see that I see that um, at least from my perspective, them trying to grapple with that balance. And and I think it's a very worthy um, it's a worthy question to wrestle with. So I, I appreciate your your comments there and agree that that's something that that we need to be looking at. Any other comments? OK, yeah. um, I did want to ask in terms of um, I, I'm assuming Lance and Layla that you guys will put out another uh, separate poll to see when people can get together for this particular session. Um, and, and we'll kind of leave it at that rather than trying to find time for anything now. I think this has been a wonderful conversation. I, I appreciate everyone's participation. And uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is Lance. I do. And I do see somebody's hand raised. It's the letter G, but I don't know who that is. Oh, thank you. I, I did not see that. I only saw Tasha. Oh, I think I think that was Tasha. I think she was coming up as guest. Oh, I'm sorry. OK. Um, yes, I will. I've been taking some notes. I'll probably have to listen to this again. Um, I have some thoughts on how to proceed. I just need to think about the timing and I'll, I'll be honest. It won't be in the next 45 days. Um, I, I think that um, we've got a lot of coming. There's going to be a lot of work coming out of Congress that could that would be flowing to the state. Um, but I can, uh, and I'm also going to talk to Mr. Bockenstead and Mr. Schutte, um, who are sort of the lead individuals on the administration side about um, um, topics or opportunities that might be worthy of the BAC's uh, consideration on this line. And then um, I think I want to reconnect with Jonathan, by the way, did a great job at the Assembly's Budget Finance Committee last week, and then with Assembly members. Press Perdia and La France to make sure that we um, we're capturing what they're looking for. So let me kind of regroup on this, put a proposal together for you, and then um, in the future, 
and try to we'll put something together. Um, I do think the assembly is interested at a high level. They're interested to know what the economic benefits, impacts, changes, um, next steps would be if uh, not only how did the CARES Act help our community, but um, if we're influenced or have the fortunate ability to get more, where would we direct it and why? Mm -hmm. And then um, and then to the point that Nolan mentioned, you know, do we do we serve as a, um, a review and reflection or just, you know, kind of distilling the key points on work that's being done by others? It, it, that's a that's a lot of effort, so we're going to have to narrow it down. We'll get it started. Thank you, much appreciated. Jonathan, you have a comment or question? Yeah, a slight, very slight topic change, uh, Madam Chair, and that is to M Mr. Wilbur's comments reminded me that um, uh, Assemblymember LaFrance's, LaFrance last week at, at uh, or the week before um, at the Budget Finance Committee meeting um, said some really nice things about the Budget Advisory Commission and, and the amount of energy that, that members are currently bringing to the commission and the just the, how effective the commission is at the moment and how responsive it is and how they've really appreciated it. And, and I think it's important that that you guys hear at least secondhand, right, that, um, you know, those comments that came down and and to say thank you, right, uh, for everything that everyone's doing to to be to be energetic and to, to keep us moving forward. And, you know, really the last two years, um, there has been a shift, I think, in our energy level and in our rhythm um, and, you know, Nolan's leadership, Alyssa's leadership and, and Lance and Lila's leadership on keeping us moving forward, I think, has made us a much more effective commission. And I think the assembly is uh, is recognizing that. And so um, just to say they say thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. Excellent. OK. I, um, with that, I think we'll conclude the open discussion and then we have next scheduled meetings, special meeting for the ASD budget uh, is still to be determined. And then we've, uh, we've, I think decided that we're gonna move the April one, but um, Lance and Lila will we'll wait and look for your doodle poll on that. And then we've got May 6th and June 3rd on the books. Yeah, let me just add, I, when I put the agenda together, I wasn't sure how you guys would advance on the resolution. So that's why I put that special meeting in there as a March to be determined. Frankly, I don't think you need it. I think your work is done Okay. Um, on that one. So I, I don't think we'll need another one of those. I will look at the March or at the April advance. And the more I think about it, uh, frankly, it would benefit me if we could bump it a week or two. Um, uh, because that's when I'm going to be deep in first quarter budget revision. So we'll send a doodle poll out, anticipate that one being moved, and then the May 6th and the June. Now it's interesting. Uh, yep, lots. Uh, seas of change are about uh, are going to be upon us here. We're going to have a mayoral election, the first one on April 6th, and then probably a second one on May, on May 11th. So we'll, um, it's also going to influence um, what we're doing at OMB, sure. So thank you. Lance? Yeah, thank you. All right, with that, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, this is Nolan, so moved. Okay, I heard Nolan, um, and then I think we had someone else who, who can now second that. Tasha, second. Thank you, Tasha. All right, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time and and all of your work being here today and, and all of your comments and very much appreciated. Thank you.